Hi everyone, welcome back. You've reached episode 21 of our journey together through the book of Genesis. As ever, the transcript of this message is contained within the podcast notes section on the audio version of the podcast available through the Buzz Sprite website. Now we'll pick up where we left off last time and that's at the point in Genesis when God gives another command. And beginning at verse 16 it says, And the Lord commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The critical thing that is said here is, the phrase that in the day you eat of it, you will certainly die. The phrase you will die refers to two things. Firstly, it means you're going to die physically, but also it will mean that you will die spiritually. So with all the trees of the garden to choose from except one, and that one he's commanded not to eat from, I wonder how that's going to work out in the longer run. But in the meantime, in the remainder of the chapter, he now gives Adam a companion. And ladies, this is where you come in. So let's pick it up in verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now it's interesting to note that after God had made everything so far, he had repeatedly used this phrase and said that it was good. But he then creates man and he puts him in paradise. And on this occasion he doesn't say it is good. And that is because man needs something extra. Man is not good yet because... As he says, it is not good for man to be alone. You see, we were not designed to live alone. The passage talks about the fact that God gives him a mate. And this has to do with what we, of course, today call marriage. Now, before I unpack this, I want to state very clearly that there are exceptions. God does not expect everyone to marry. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 tells us that some people have a special gifting where it is a spiritual advantage for them not to marry. They are then able to travel or commit more time to the Lord's work. But even recognising that fact, we still need to understand that God does not wish for any of us to live in isolation, even if we're unmarried. It may be God's plan for some of us not to be married, but it is not his plan for anyone to be isolated and alone. He says to Adam, it is not good for a person to live alone. So God says to Adam, I'm going to create a helper for you, a companion. But please note carefully, God did not create a woman to be a servant for a man. Hear that, ladies, you are not his servant. God created you to be his helper and his companion. I would suggest a lot of husbands need to understand that and some wives need to understand that as well. A companion and a helper is the wife to the man, not a slave, but she's also not got to be a judge or a controller of the man either. A companion and a helper is what the word used here means. In fact this word translated helper here in this version of the Old Testament is the same word used elsewhere in the Bible to describe God's relationship with us. As a matter of fact, in the New Testament, when God the Father sent the Holy Spirit, the old King James Version says he's going to send a comforter, and the Greek word comforter is the same word as the Hebrew word being used here. So the woman is supposed to be the husband's helper and comforter. Now to fully relate to that statement, we need to read the next couple of verses together, verses 19 and 20 of chapter 2, which says this, Now the Lord had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky and the wild animals, But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So here we get a flashback to chapter 1, and Adam is seen to be naming animals, which is a way of telling us that he has authority over them. 
But when it comes to a lifelong companionship for humankind, only another human will be seen to do. Verse 21 onwards then tells us this. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of man's ribs, and then he closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man, and the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Please note, the woman is not created out of the dust of the ground. She was taken from the rib of the man, she was taken from him and formed for him. And the fact that she was taken out of his side confirms again that she was neither superior or inferior to him. She came from his side to stand by his side as his helper and his equal. And all the women said, Amen. And that, my friends, is the model for true Christian marriage. And we'll unpack more of what that should look like in the next episode. I look forward to seeing you then.